What's that like? What's going on, people? Hey, it's another edition of the What's That Like podcast, and I'm your host, John Knowles. Happy New Year. Happy 2019. Yeah, here we are, one year from 2020. You know, I really hope they get uh, Barbara Walters next year, like host uh, Dick Clark's New Year's Rockin' Eve, so when the ball drops, she can go, I'm Barbara Walters, and this is 2020. That's kind of my hope. That's my little comedy bit at the top of the show. Anyway, thanks for tuning in once again. We got a new episode for you with uh, a special guest, Brad Carson. Now, many of you folks in the central Illinois area would know him as Brad Weiss. Brad Weiss grew up here in Mount Olive, but uh, oh, almost 20 years ago, he got into the broadcast business. Somebody told him, hey, maybe you should think about changing your name. So he took the name Brad Carson. I didn't ask him this in the podcast, so I'm bringing it up now. It seems like an obvious thing to ask. But anyway, Brad is currently the producer of 92.9 ESPN in Memphis. He's on air with Gary Parrish on the College Hoop Show, produces a number of the other sports shows, but he's also got a couple of music shows that air in Indianapolis and Madison. And we'll get all the links to those out in the show notes. You can always listen to Brad online as well. You know, we have producer Bob. We've got producer Brad on the show, and it's a great thing to have him. Brad's been a guest I've wanted to have on for a long time, but, it, you know, I just hadn't asked him. I hadn't reached out. He was kind of on my list of folks to get at some point and just happened to be at our favorite watering hole here in uh, Mount Olive, Turner Hall, the other night. Uh, and uh, there he was, and I, st- I walked up to him. We started talking. We've known each other for a while. You'll hear that in the show. And I said, hey, how about, how about coming over in the morning? You want to come over and maybe – Take some time off your vacation and work a little bit and come on the What's That Like podcast. He said he'd be happy to. So we spent the better part of an hour together uh, just discussing how he got his career going. There's a lot of folks that listen to podcasts. They're like, how do you break into radio? How do you get going? And I think he's got a great story. And we talk a lot about small town America, small town Mount Olive, and really how do you break and suffer and 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 struggle and finally you get your breakthrough and you get that's gotta work you gotta have hard work to get things done and he he discusses all that stuff as well uh this show is brought to you as always by mike belovich remax alliance you'll hear an ad from him in a little bit uh we want to thank dexco uh home renovations for staying on board with us here in the new year and i want to give a departing thanks to u belts u belts uh, came on board during the christmas season i hope it was great for them as it was for me I know uh, a lot of our folks have uh, reached out to some of our sponsors in the past. Mike just reached out the other day and said he sold a house based on someone off the podcast. So that's great. WTL Nation bringing you something that is going to help you as well. And you can always count on our sponsors to be vetted by me. By me. I mean, I'm, I'm a consumer as well. So if I don't believe in them, I certainly don't promote them on my show. And uh, a c- continuing thanks to Spin to Win. Spin to Win's been with me for over a year on the Turner Hall live broadcast. And one of the things that people see me in public all the time, they always bring up, hey, uh, you're that podcast guy. When's Turner Hall coming back? And I always tell them, hey, March 1st, March 1st, the drawing will resume. I think the, the total pot amount's almost $60,000. So that's what we're coming back. We hit pause. Nobody won. It didn't go out. We didn't quit. We hit pause at the end of October, and it'll be back on March 1st. Back to you at Turner Hall, and we'll see if if uh, we'll be there. We have a spin to wins with us. We'll be there with them as well. So let's get to Brad. Small-town guy, grew up right here in central Illinois, went off to the big time. What's that like? Brad, how you doing, man? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Thank well, you for the invitation. You know, you're, you, you know, I, I mentioned it in the setup. Yep. But basically, you know, you're a big time radio broadcaster. What do you think of my studio this, 312? We're broadcasting live from the Mon Olive Studios here. <laughs> this is awesome. I I had no idea there was a, a de facto radio studio in Mon Olive, but it turns out there is. There is. Yes. You know, and you can do anything on the internet these yeah, days. Absolutely. That's why I love the internet, and I'm I'm excited to be on your show today. Well, you've been a big supporter, and, and this goes 
goes back a couple of, uh, I want to say almost two years. Yep. You you kind of found me coming back, yeah. you know, linking back in your hometown through the Turner Hall yeah. Queen of Hearts. I yep. started broadcasting yep. that. And you were always very religious about tuning in. Absolutely. What, what, why, why tune into that show every week? I mean, it's just a drawing. Yeah. Uh, I love my hometown. And I'm like a lot of small town people that I support my hometown. My dad lives here and has had businesses since 1970, Mm -hmm. um, starting with a spray company. He's got a chemical business now. I worked in excavation with my dad. So my dad lives here. He's got a farm right across the street from me, actually. Um, Graduated from Mount Olive High School. And, you know... This is my. This is where I'm from, and this is what I'm about. You know, like certain. Pe- you're from this area. You're from Staunton, Mont Olive. Yeah. You married a, a Mont Olive person. Um, you know, I, I think people are lying to themselves when they aren't true to where they come from, and sometimes that happens. And I'm not. Uh, I'm not that special. You know, there's a lot of special people in small towns like Mont Olive, and I watch them and I support them. And when there's ten thousand people or two thousand <laughs> people uh, tuning in to a broadcast in my hometown, whether it's a card drawing or a horseshoe tournament or a homecoming or a Mother Jones monument event, I- I'm all about that. It was it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, we had a hell of a run there. I mean, we hit thousands of people. Stuff. And you know, what? this you is the watch- Queen of Hearts drawing we're speaking of yeah. that was at Turner Hall in Mont Olive. And they're drawing for one card, and that one card didn't draw until near the end. Yeah, almost a year yeah. to the day uh, ago. I think yep. it was January 5th last year. Yeah. But broadcast Brad, on Facebook. Broadcast live on the What's That Like podcast yep. Facebook page every single week. I, I, I'll tell you, it didn't even do the crowd justice, though. No. Brad, you saw mostly. Oh, yeah. Just and I was, was there in, a couple of them, in too. In the hall. Yeah. There are 3,000 people outside. So Turner Hall is a labor hall that's turned into a, a local organization, you know, uh, and, and it was associated with different organizations over the l- several years, but it's basically a local civic organization. Yep. That building should only fit a couple hundred people, probably fit 500 to 600 inside. You guys had a tent outside, so there's probably 2,000 people on that campus, yep. plus how many thousand tuned in for the drawing on your podcast? Oh, yeah, 10 thousand. So I was one of them, and I was in Memphis, Tennessee, and you and I have connected over the years, being at, uh, I guess, wedding receptions, maybe, uh, (laughs) uh, other sporting uh, fundraising events in town. And we come back, my wife and my son and I, we come back a lot. So this is my hometown, man. I'm all about it. So you grew up here. Yep. You're in radio now. Was that something you always wanted to do? When I was at Mont Olive High School, before I graduated, I, I got to play a ton of sports like kids in Mont Olive get to do, because everybody needs to play, otherwise you don't have a team. Right. Uh, like, in other words, you're playing in the halftime show, and then you like you take your helmet off from the football game, and you set it down to play in the halftime in show the so that you have yeah. a marching band at halftime. Um, so you're participating in everything. I wasn't good at sports, but I got to play, so I'd listen to my broadcasts on local radio station WSMI, tape delayed sometimes. The Carlinville Holiday Tournament be going on. I'd be listening to our tape delayed broadcast because I was so enamored with it in the bus on a <laughs> yeah. Walkman. I'm like, dudes, we are on the radio live, and this is the play by play that we were just playing in a game. It's awesome. And, pe- and I yeah. was the one who probably cared a little too much compared to my my buddies who were actually good at basketball. And then, you know, I would do, you've got this set up in your studio here. I didn't have anything like this. I had a, a two-deck cassette and a microphone rig, and I'd do impressions of all the teachers at Monolf. So Mr. Ryan, I had a spot-on <laughs> Mr. Ryan impression. I had a, all the teachers at Monolf High School yeah. from that era, the, the 80s and 90s. I have a Delm. There's a, I have a, a Mr. Hansen. Uh, <laughs> a, a Mr. Hansen, who is uh, celebrating his retirement now as a bus driver in Monolf, he, he, I, I had all these great impressions, and I, it was not great. I, they were great in my own head, but, you know, like I, I'd do the starting block for the, for the track thing where Mr. Hansen Hanson's gun wouldn't go off because they had a bad starting gun for the, you know, and I had all these little, little idiosyncrasies. Little yeah. And, you yeah. know, for a 16, 17 year old, that was probably a little different in Mont Olive, Illinois. And so I, being enamored with radio, and then I took a tour at North Central College in Naperville, Illinois uh, in 1993, and that changed my life. I saw that radio station outside of Chicago. They're doing traffic reports, and I'm like, it's it's kind of a big time area, big six A football. They're broadcasting on their station at the college radio station. I'm like, this is where I got to go, and uh, you know, I got a band scholarship to go there, play saxophone, and uh, I I quickly dished the saxophone and took up the radio station, and I was hooked. 
That's awesome. Yeah. Tell me, can you still do a Ron Ryan impersonation? Uh, let's see. Uh, four, four, four. He, he was big on fours and score, and everything had sort of a, a rhyme. So up here on the board, you'll see... We have four stories at 444, uh, four score, and like he had these, he had these hooks that he would get into, and then like he would just snap. He'd be like, "Hey, everybody!" <laughs> and then it, it would come back to normal. It, it, that was not a very good Ron Ryan impression. But Mr. Ryan, by the way, 50 years of uh, wrestling and, and retiring as the uh, wrestling coach at Mono, so local legend in wrestling. I hero. know. I'm trying to get the gym named after him. That's, you, I, I saw I, that I, effort. I think it's push. worth it, too. I don't know if it'll happen, but you know, I'm trying to use social media for, yeah. for powers for, for good Ron things. Ron actually would be a good to come on this podcast because Ron is going to be uh, in the ring of honor at the University of Illinois. Big time. <laughs> I mean, he's put the time in. And, I don't know if he gets yeah. into listening to these, but Probably he's, on not. My, he's on my list, yeah. Brad. Yeah. Uh, uh, definitely, yeah. I mean, fifty years in one mm-hmm. school coaching one sport—that's yeah. never going to happen yep. again. I, I, it just in this time, day, and age, people just don't go anywhere and do something for fifty. No, years. No, they don't dedicate themselves to people. I, I'm, I'm kind of broad brush here, but yeah, I mean, dedication to do fifty years of anything is amazing. Whether it's, it's a marriage or wrestling coach or t- he was a great, as great a wrestling coach as as Ron Ryan was at Mount Olive High School in Illinois here. Um, he was an even better teacher and put up with my crap, and that's when I, I'm I'm really indebted to him because I like took physics and chemistry and all these hard classes. I wouldn't have had a clue if I wouldn't have had him in, in high school. Well, you 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 talk about how he influenced you as a youngster, kid, yeah. coach, teacher, all yeah. that growing up. I, I never went to school here. I didn't know him. He yeah. wasn't my coach. He wasn't my teacher. Still one of the greatest guys I know. Terrific human. And his wife uh, as well. His fam- great family. Uh, yeah. And never, same house, same place, dedicated, all in. And that's what yeah. it takes in a, in a town like Mount Olive to, to keep it rolling. Well, you we got to get it going, yeah. people. Okay. Hashtag Ron Ryan Gym. Yeah. We got to make that The happen. effort to rename the Mount Olive High School Gym, should, it should be Ron Ryan Gym. I think that's fair. I think, well, they heard it here on the What's That yeah. Like podcast, Broadcasting Legend. We're making, we're also doing <laughs> movements. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But so, that? yeah, Mount Olive High School, and then I went to college, and yeah. Radio bug took over. So That's what happened? Story. What? So you're in North Central College, mm-hmm. and, you, and you're on the radio station there. What? Yep. What type of things are you doing on the radio? Well, there? right away it was different because, like, I grew up doing small time uh, basketball. I would play in a gym, and there's you know 100 people in there, and then I was broadcasting, you know, in my first year 6A football. So there's 15,000 people at Naperville North or Naperville Central. Mm-hmm. So that's way different for a kid from Mount Olive. And like the quarterback's going to go to Wisconsin. You're calling. You're trying to learn how to call a game. You're you're setting up a Marty broadcast, which is a little tower that broadcasts back to this little radio station I worked at in Naperville, uh, which is about four hours north of here, just outside of Chicago. And now the town's exploded. It's a huge town. It's huge, yeah. At that time, there were 75,000 people in Naperville. Now there's 175,000 people. But So it was big time. And we were doing metro traffic out of Chicago on the college radio station. All this stuff is like just blowing my mind because I always wanted to, I dreamed about doing that in that, that time period. And then I quickly learned I needed to separate myself from the pack. And so I came back home for summer, I was working with my dad at the, his local business, doing odds, odds and ends and stuff, working on a farm, and uh, I, I took took up a radio here in, in Southern Illinois. I, I met Terry Tote and Terry another t- legend. Terry Tote is the program director for WSMI, and they've had a lot of great things for him recently. Is he's kind of struggling with some some health stuff, and uh, Terry cut me a break. And uh, said, I need you to, first thing you're going to do is cover the Irish days this summer in Farmersville. <laughs> so uh, Randy Prangy brought me to Farmersville. I set up a Marty and, uh, you know, now I'm doing color analysis of the uh, Irish goat days or whatever in uh, Farmersville, Illinois, and talking about, you know, going to McCoupin County Fair that summer yep. in the middle of a, of a pig pen, talking to local business people, Prairie Farms, Dairy, Taste the Homemade Goodness, the whole deal. And <laughs> it's everything I grew up with, though, yeah. you know, and I, when I talk to people about radio, I talk about doing farm reports and obituaries in the middle of a cornfield because that's exactly what I did. And that's and what I WSMI did, is. Yeah, and I did that yeah. for four years. And so I put the time in. And so that's that That was my commercial experience. And then I in 1996, uh, I needed an internship because I needed something even different than that to separate myself. And I um, reached out to a guy named Smokey Rivers. And Smokey was the program director of Y98 in St. Louis. Mm-hmm. 
And so Smokey said, uh, we need a morning show intern. Yeah, this is 1996. The Summer Olympics were going on. That's how I remember it. And so Guy Phillips and Michelle Dibble interviewed me, and they said, well, kid, yeah, you're not going to get paid. Uh, you can do the summer internship at the morning show. So I was the intern in 1996 for Phillips & Company on Y98 FM. How about that? And... I was the on the streets guy. Uh, Brad Weiss, uh, the real name, was uh, on the streets of Forest Park interviewing people about what Olympic sport, if they could invent one, what they invent <laughs> with a little recorder. And they're like, uh, midget tossing. Uh, so, and then I'd cut the tape, bring it back to Guy and Michelle, and they'd, and, um, I'll be honest, uh, th- that was hard. Um, I won't throw anybody under the bus, but I was, uh, you know, I was a 19, 20 year old doing summer internship. And so I was, I don't think they, they saw much in me. And uh, I got a B on my internship and uh, I didn't get an A. And, and I, I was I was pissed about that, but I thought I did a good job that summer, and I learned a lot. Yeah. And, but because I was working at a real radio station, I didn't give a crap, you know, like, whatever. Let's go back to WSMI. Sure. I, I met you yeah. that one summer yeah. at, when you were doing a, a broadcast on WSMI. You did. And uh, you, were no cover, way. you were covering a movie premiere. At the Litchfield I remember it. Cine- Cinema. I remember it. And it was Apollo I remember 13. how excited you were. Like, you had the energy. <laughs> I always me- Here's the thing about my job. When people have actually a life force or a pulse or some sort of energy now, about them, yeah. you see the difference. I remember, so I remember you, you walking up to me and you yeah. go, hey, man, you, what do you hear? You're, you're see- Apollo 13? You big Tom Hanks Apollo fan? Apollo 13. And I go, I go, yeah. And, and you looked at my wife and you go, are you excited to be here? She didn't want to She didn't want to talk. Didn't talk. And you said something to her like, uh, well, well, how did you get her to come, sir? And I go, well, I went to see Bridges of Madison County with her. She had to come to this with me. And then, uh, and then I get a phone call like two, or, you know, like the next day, and somebody goes, you know, it's pre cell phone. Yeah, really. And yeah. They called you on a real hot landline. Yeah. yeah. Well, my friend called me and yeah. said, I heard you the next day. <laughs> the next day, yeah. Because I heard you talking about yeah. Apollo thirteen, and then they were laughing about your Bridges and Madison County line back in the studio oh, that's later. So good. And I thought, man, I'm, I'm famous now. I thought, I thought I hit it big. The biggest I was ever in my whole career, and will always forever be this, was when I worked at WSMI for my dad and my my family because. Uh, uh, word of mouth. That's what they hear. That's what they listen to. My dad and my grandfather woke up and listened to uh, Trading Post, Trading Post, Farm Reports and Obituaries. Seventy-six-year-old yes. uh, Maud Ethel uh, Smith died on Saturday. Funeral services will be held at the Becker and Son Funeral Home with burial in Elm Lawn Cemetery. Friends may call from six until eight. That, <laughs> that, my friend. Obituaries, farm reports, corn reports, those that was the highlight of my father and my my family from my career. That will always be it. That's something. Yep. You you did that like you've been doing I did it. a four million of those yes. obituaries. I, they had a form at WSMI. Don't let anybody fool you. There's a form for that and they just fill in the names. Oh, I can believe that. Yeah. Uh and, and by the way, I'm not denigrating it at all. It's a terrific service and trust me, people listen and if you mispronounce oh, those names, oh yeah. It, it's a big deal. So like that's radio, and that's and it still means something to people. It's it's still huge here. My mother in law, she listens to it every day. Absolutely, she, she makes it's not real until she heard it on WSMI. Absolutely, you're talking about the county t- or the Carnival yeah. Holiday Tournament. My my mother in law goes, "Well, you guys are playing at yeah. three o'clock today. Yeah, yeah. You're playing. You're Wood playing. River. I know and everything about what your kid's yeah. doing and where he's going to yeah, be and what the time of is. WSMI, yeah, WSMI, and, yep. and you, yep. you you do mention the obits, and yeah. and you know if if they heard a rumor. Yeah. It's yeah. not real until they heard it on WSMI. Well, and in small town radio at that level, when I would call games, because I called you know three or four summers of Carnival Holiday tournaments uh, during the winter time, I should say. Yeah. I'd do some summer stuff, but in the winter for that month of of college break, I'd come back. I'd do Carnival Holiday tournament. I usually call a game like Verdon had a tournament at the time, like the Macoupin County tournament, being Verdon or wherever it'd be. Yeah. And uh, when you mess up. I mean, you get an on-the-spot critique immediately, and people in this area, they it's it's sort of like Bronx, New York, when it comes to their kids and their family and their radio. Like, uh, you realize that in the third quarter, when Johnny was, that wasn't Johnny, the number 21, that was Larry, my kid. Uh, I don't know if you guys can clarify that. Like, yeah, yeah, ma'am. 
We're, we'll take care of that, okay? That's so I'm just true. trying to. So I'm just true. trying to get through here, man. Yeah, I appreciate the, you listening. We got the ending right. Yeah. So and so. I'm we, lucky to be here. One. Right. That was the most important. Yeah. Part. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, unbelievable backstory there. Yeah. Coming through this area. So yep. then you're at Y98. Yeah. And what happens after that? In 1997, I graduated because I was going to a private college and I needed to finish early. So I used all those internships and everything that I had, and I got done a semester early at North Central. I was 21. And I wasn't making any money, clearly. Uh, and so I needed a real job. I needed to figure out what I'm going to do. I'm 21 years old. I got a bachelor's degree. And so I decided I'm going to putt and try to get a graduate assistantship or go to graduate school. That's what everybody does. At least 20 years ago, that's what they were doing. Yeah. That's what I did. It, because I And then I wanted to go to the University of Florida. I had this dream. I'm going to go to a hot, sunny Florida Gator that would be awesome. They have this great communications school. And I thought, I'm going to be either a professor or I'll figure it out. And then I figured out I couldn't get into Florida. I wrote a letter. I got accepted. But it was going to cost $20,000 a year. I can't afford I mean, I'm not going to ask my parents to pay for that. Um, at the meantime, when I was a kid growing up watching ESPN, I was enamored with UNLV running Rebels basketball oh, yeah. and Jerry Tarkanian. Because at the time, <laughs> in the, if you remember, late 80s, early 90s, cable came to Macoupa County. I'm watching ESPN. They're doing explosives at a gym in Las Vegas, and this is awesome. And so, you know, I'd always, like, I have Little League pictures with UNLV hats on because my dad would bring them back when he'd go to Vegas and stuff. I thought it was cool. I sent a... An, assi- uh, 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 an application to UNLV, I got accepted, and then they gave me a graduate assistantship and paid for all my school, gave me a salary, an office, wow. an office, you know, this is a big deal, I'm 21, and so I moved to Las Vegas, and I'm 21 years old, and... Uh, what was that like? You're 21 in Vegas. That is a whole separate thing in and of itself, being 21 years old from Mount Olive, Illinois, having gone to a small liberal arts college and moving to Las Vegas. I mean, it's... First of all, you got to have your head on straight if you're going to do that. Um, and then you learn a lot about, about yourself, I think, because I'm an only child. I was going out there by myself, and I had to make it happen for myself. And, you know, Vegas is a terrific school, a gr- great place to go if you want to make it happen for yourself. Because I worked, I got a job at a radio station on the side because I was doing night classes. I was teaching in the morning. So I had all afternoon. I could sleep 24 hours a day and get food 24 hours a day. Sent an air check out to a Las Vegas radio station to get a side job at a radio station. So I had, I had money coming in from the radio station. I had an assistantship. I was getting my master's finished up, doing that for two and a half, three years. And then I would work trade shows at the Las Vegas Convention Center. Mm-hmm. Like they did a trucker show, and I worked the, the booth with WBAP out of Dallas for a couple hundred dollars for the weekend, working their booth with the Midnight Cowboys signing autographs, and I'm man in the booth. I'd worked when they built the Las Vegas Motor Speedway in 1997 Sounds or right. eight. Yeah. That opened. I got a job as in the press booth, and I'm doing, uh, you know, um, like it'd be like uh, Jeff Gordon will be taking the podium in uh, ten minutes. Please, uh, everybody, you have to be towards the front. And then I'd put the water bottles out. I had that job, manning the press booth at, wow. the, at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway for the first annual NASCAR race for the Las Vegas 400 or whatever. Mm-hmm. So I had all this resume, and I finished up my master's, and I'm like, whoa, what am I going to do? And I was making a little bit of money, enough to get through, which is all you really wanted if you're in radio, by the way, at that point. And I was 24, and a company reached out to me and said, hey, um, would you like to be a program director in Atlantic City, New Jersey? And I'd been on the air in Las Vegas at that time, had a little bit of a resume, and I said, I'm still single. Yep. And it was it was sexy enough for me to go. Off to AC. Here I go. This is uh, 2000. So in 2000, I moved by myself because I'm still single at the time um, uh, to program director of 106.3 The Shore in Atlantic City, New Jersey. And uh, I programmed that for two years. We flipped on another radio station that we had a bigger signal called Mix. Mix... Uh, went under and they flipped the format and at the same time i had two job offers and i needed to leave um i had a job offer in 2004 at the same time as i had a memphis offer so i was going to be either the program director for 94 one the buzz and be on the air and do mornings for the buzz which is sort of like a uh a rock ac ish type and and by the way that format was evolving away like that format went away and I had an offer to be the program director at Sirius XM in Washington, D.C. for the heart and the blend at the same time. And I went and looked, and I got offered that job. And uh, I didn't take it because I went through Sirius XM in D.C., which is in the middle of a a big post office building with studios almost like this one, only there's 400 of them. 
And I'm like, this doesn't feel like what I do. <laughs> and I, it's, again, still single. It's 2004. With those two offers, I visited Memphis. And I was like, man, I'll be five hours from my family. Uh, it's time to go to another, a bigger market. And I went to Memphis. And I've been there now for 14 years. And I went from the buzz to another radio station, a classic kid station we put on. Uh, we flipped that again a few years ago to country. But the, the station that really changed my career was the sports station because I went back to my roots. And in 2009, my boss said, do you want to program a sports station? And a lot of those sports stations were coming on FM because Stern and the alternative format was changing. Uh, it happened in St. Louis. You yeah. know, you had 101 become 101. Um, and all these stations around the country were becoming sports and ours was no different. And he said, uh, I, you have a sports background. You really love the Cardinals and I, I watch you. Uh, do you want to do this? And I said, uh, do I have a choice? And not really. So, uh, <laughs> I became the program director for 92, nine ESPN in Memphis. And that changed my career because that station, um, in the last 10 years, we've signed on five or six different shows. Uh, Gary Parrish, who writes for CBS and is on television, is I produce his show and yeah. he works with us there, does the afternoon show. Uh, Jeff Hawkins, who has a Harvard Law degree and is the local columnist, he's the Bernie Nicholas of Memphis, he works with me. Um, we put on Jason and John, both of them, they write for The Athletic and they do the midday show. And we are the flagship home for the Memphis Grizzlies. And I mean, that changed my life, John, because all you hope for in this business is to find something. And we really found it with that thing. And we got nominated for a Marconi this year. Yeah, I was going to um, ask you about that. Yeah. yeah. And so, I mean, when you start talking about this kind of stuff, that's where you're like, you you did, you did hope that somebody recognized what you did and that you started something and it's a real business and it's a, it's a real benefit for your advertisers and your listeners are digging it. But we did get nominated for Marconi and we got to fly out to Orlando this year. Um, and it was rare for us because we're the small guy. Memphis is big of a market as it is. It's a top 50 or whatever. But like when you have two stations out of Boston and Philadelphia and there's one out of St. Louis, you're like, it's just good to be here. And that was what happened. Happen. We had to fly out and hang out with Mickey for a few days and see our logo on the deal, and uh, that was a trip. That's the full story. Uh, probably too long for this no, podcast. I hope people the, are still. Are you there? Is this on still? No, you know how podcasts work. Yeah. That's the beauty of them. Yeah, it can go long form. Yeah. You're not trying to just get down into a couple of details. That's right. Five minute takes. Yeah. No, explain yourself. Get it out there. I think that's really what the medium is all about. Yeah. I mean, uh, as you think about you know where you've come, where do you kind of see the future of of what maybe a where you're at and yeah. b the future of radio? Well, I think you and I talked about it before we got started here, and this medium right here is where it's at. I mean, it's a create it's a choose your own adventure now because anybody can be a broadcaster. You just light up your phone and you're broadcasting from Turner Hall, yeah. or your garage, or your home studio, or a radio station. In our case, uh, we're on that radio.com platform, you know. It's a huge deal because you've got hundreds of, of intercom radio stations, the company I work for, and they've got this radio.com app. And my, my station, we promote that app. We put podcasts on that app. Everything we do is on demand. So if I want to listen to the Gary Paris show on 92.9 in Memphis, and I'm a fan of that, I can listen to it in Des Moines. Or we have people listen to us from all over the country because they're fans of Gary mm -hmm. and they're college basketball fans. And then they want to hear about Penny Hardaway and him being the Memphis coach. Those people can get that. Con so now everything is sort of ubiquitous. You can get content anytime, anywhere, any place. And so that's why we're all on these cell phones. I don't think it's a, it takes a rocket scientist to figure out this is where it's going, the cell phone. And it's going to the computers and the, the cell phones just advancing more and more and more to where it's it's just they uh, it's the analytics look at okay what's John like John is a he's a, a married guy he's got a family he's into music he's into sports he's uh, into these things in in Central Illinois and they can find everything about you based on the analytics and feed it to you exactly and, and so it's almost scary yeah. in that regard and that's where it's, it's going. almost like you think about something yep and there it is on your on your yeah. phone is an ad. Well, and, it, and it really is scary in that regard. And the radio business is only getting better in that regard. And I'm not just saying that because I'm a radio guy. It's true. I mean, anything that is has to do with direct targeted marketing, my company now does. Like we can take a business like in Memphis, let's call it um, in Memphis, Tennessee, let's call it a local gym, like a friend of mine just started a gym in Memphis called F45. We can do direct targeted for that guy. We can do radio ads for that guy. We can do Facebook push. We can use our talent to help create and customize. And that spokesman mentality is what's really different, especially about sports, because 
people really react when you, when it's called to action for somebody that they yeah. like or admire or they listen to on a day to day basis. Like if John, even you, I mean, it, it, anybody, if you, your band says something or if your band's playing someplace and they follow you, or I listen to John because I want to hear what's going on. He, I, I follow him. Hey, if he says go to uh, Victory Lane, I'm going to Victory Lane. That's where I'm going to buy my Ford from. You know, thank you. Uh, so Victory that, Lane appreciates that. There's a too, sponsor, Brad. a yes. former sponsor, I believe, or so. <laughs> Re up those ads of Victory Lane, uh, but no. Oh, like um, it, so, radio is has never been bigger. Uh, you know, ninety two percent the the reach of radio is has never been bigger, and I, I I point that out because the sexiest thing in the room always gets the most attention, but sometimes doesn't get the most time, and that's the case with radio. People spend time with radio, and with the new technology, they spend even more time with it. I only put a show out when it's ready to go out. Sure. I I mean, good or bad, you know, I, yeah. whether I'm not growing it as fast as it could or should be. You, you you and I set this up less yeah. than twelve hours ago. That's right. I saw you at yeah. Turner Hall. Yeah, <laughs> we were yeah. talking. I go, hey, come by in the yeah. morning. We'll we'll knock yeah. one out. I didn't have anything planned, but it was like I struck when the moment was right. Sure. And I think it's a good topic. And we're going to put it out there. In other words, but if I don't put one out today, mm-hmm. it's okay. No, it's okay. Yeah. What's the toughest thing about producing something daily on the radio across all those shows, all those formats, and having something different to talk about each? It's and a every terrific time? question. It's a combination of routine and regimen and building something over a period of time. Like when we get back next week, we're going to have to get Adrian Wojnarowski from ESPN on, and he's friends with Gary, which helps. But I have his cell phone number. I text him and I see if he's available, and I can get him on to talk about the Grizzlies in the NBA. And that's going to be at four twenty-five because that's the 425 segment where we do interviews we have a 444 story we have four stories at 444 gary and i on that particular show you know on 92.9 we have a bit and that bit needs to be filled and so we prep that so that's a prep segment every day at five we have this standard guest and then i need to book somebody at 525 and then we have a segment called dinner to go what i'm saying is Pre-planned plus the the contacts that you make over the course of ten years, all of that factors in. And I think for people in my business, you have to be regimented enough to know you got to get up, got to do this, 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 and this. Produce this promo at this time. Meet with this talent at this time. Prep the radio show. Book the show, and that happens every day like a bicycle. And if you get off the bicycle, that's when you're hooked. And and I think the the ones that don't understand what we do don't understand that it's just. It's just like anything. Like you have a job. Most people, have, well, your your other job may not be like this, but um, for most jobs, it's a routine. It's left and right brain. Absolutely, it's yeah. left and right brain. So the uh, let me see if I can get this right. The left side is get up, get coffee, get at the office by eight thirty. Work till six, and then there's the set of routines that go in between that. The right brain side is do this cool promo because uh, Penny Hardaway said this this weird thing that I can write up this thing about. Uh, book this guy because you have his, you know, that's the fill in the blank stuff. So I think it's, I always tell people when I talk to them about radio, it's left and right brain. It's not one or the other. And the ones that are all one dimensional are, are not as good as the others. Well, like I always, I think it's fascinating when somebody, actually, it was John Michael. Yeah, Marty, we were yeah. talking about a year ago, and and I said the thing about my show is the opposite of what yep. Lauren Michael says about Saturday Night Live. Right, um, Lauren would say the show doesn't go on because it's ready; it goes on because it's eleven thirty. Yep. I put mine on when it's ready to go. Yep. You're in the Laura Michaels camp. It's got to go on every day, regardless of what's happening yes. in the world or no matter what. But I think in radio, it's a talent combination of both things. Plan show that has to be on at a certain time and ad lib show. Like It's like when I was in, that's why I taught public speaking at UNLV. This is what I liked about North Central when I was there. And I liked public speaking because you have impromptu, extemporaneous or whatever off the cuff, and then you have the formulaic plan one you have to be able to do both right all right so yeah. and i think and i think lauren michaels is probably the same way sometimes saturday night live's best moments are the unscripted ones and i think that's i, the, I think that's very it's a very good point it's the, the ones things you remember the yeah. most when somebody breaks up yeah when it, i write yeah. promos the voice guy laughing promo makes it a lot because that's the funny one where he made up a thing and he in his his little studio in denver that he's voicing for my radio station and it sounded funny that made the cut you know <laughs> um and I, I have done some voiceover too and that's i i, I enjoy that as well you know Hey, this is Mike Belovich with REMAX Alliance. Happy New Year. If you're looking to sell your house and you're not having any luck, give me a call or shoot me a text today. 618-292-0293. Mike Belovich, REMAX Alliance Real Estate, the number one real estate company in the Midwest. And 
I am the number one real estate agent sitting in my car right now. Anyway, I do things differently. Let me meet with you in person and go over how I would get your house sold for you. 618-292-0293. Um, anyway, let me ask you a question. Does this body make me look fat? I think it does. <laughs> is HGTV on in your house all the time like it is in mine? Is a home improvement project on your wish list? If yes, call my friend Gabe Dexheimer at Dexco Home Renovations. Gabe and his crew recently did a great job for my family kitchen. They can do a great job on your next project, too. Indoors, outdoors, decks, kitchens, baths, you name it. No jobs are too big or small. If you have an idea or just want a professional eye to help you realize your dream, call Gabe today at 618-420-1742 for a no-obligation consultation. He helped my family realize a dream kitchen, and he can help all of you, too. Let's get it done. How important is it to have, like in this Stephen A. Smith environment, ESPN? Yeah. You work for ESPN, um, mm. at least an affiliate of. Yeah. No, we are, yeah. To have the hot take. Like, you've got to have a hot take, whether yeah. it's something you believe in, but you know you just got to take a side and, and argue that. Works for some people, and it certainly works for Stephen A., doesn't it? Yeah. Um, we played a clip of Stephen A. where he was talking about the NFL the other day, and he absolutely had no clue what he was talking about. But Stephen A. is great. As, and Gary and I talked about this on 92.9 the other day, and we played the clip, and we're like, listen to this dude. He has no... Like, he was talking about a person on the... And I'm not an NFL guru, but it was like... He was talking about somebody on the Chargers who wasn't on the Chargers, but he was saying it was such conviction and such intensity. You're like, <laughs> I guess... It, but people now on Twitter control that dude. They can, like, here's the clip. Oh, my God. Did you see what Stephen A. said? Yeah. It's a new world because you can get called on that stuff. So if you're not right, be prepared to get called on it. And and the and the getting called out is ten times louder than the compliment. Absolutely. That you go, hey, that was a really good show. If you get yeah. it wrong, it's oh it's 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 right. It's monstrous. But to Stephen A's credit, he's great at what he does. And and he mm-hmm. he is also has a wealth of knowledge. He was a journalist. Um I will say this though, you can't get into what I do and what what radio successful, highly successful radio people unless you've got thick skin and you're prepared to deal with people giving you blowback. I'm fine with it. I got no problem with it. You just got to do what you do. Yeah. How how different is the business from when you started? Just oh, it's in, way in, different. Yeah. Yeah, like um, equipment wise, so different. Like you've put this. This is as, as good as any radio station that you've got set up here in your studios. Because um, when I started out twenty, now I've been in radio since I was eighteen, so that's twenty four years. Um, you would have to set up a Marty. Which means it's a a mini little tower with a you know like a like a, a t- antenna type device that you're setting in the middle of of a, the bleachers to call the basketball game. Well, now if you've got an Ethernet connection, you've got a broadcast and you've got an yeah. access unit. Uh, same with editing. When I the editing is where it really changed. When I was part of the reason why I was terrible probably in my internship is I was not good with tape. And I was in 1996, believe it or not, in St. Louis, Missouri, we're cutting tape to tape together yeah. promos and. I wasn't good at it, and but I got really good at digital. And so when digital came around in the late 90s, so we're talking, I, my first digital experience was when I was in Las Vegas, they had a program called Saw Plus 32, 32 channels, and I just watched and I played with it and I became a wizard at it. And so by the time Adobe Audition rolled around, I was killing it mm-hmm. because I could I could rig around, I could put together a promo, multi-track stuff. And I'm not a tech expert. I'm, I'm not advanced. I, I couldn't do any of the stuff you've got set up in here. I couldn't do because it's not what I do. But I was really good at Adobe, and I could put promos together, and so that changed everything, and that evolved from tape into this this digital revolution. We're now like I put a video out last week, and it was on iMovie because I wasn't, you know, I'm like I got to get something out that just kind of yeah. synopsis of what we did this year, and it was all on iMovie. I'm like this, th- that only has happened in the last two years, and that's no. all on my phone. And, and I tell you, almost every video, not a lot, Facebook Live yeah. is obviously just live yeah but anything i put out on video yeah. is all on iMovie it's all iMovie i shoot it with my phone yeah i edit it with my phone mm-hmm. i send it to the internet with my phone yeah and the thing that got so many people we going going back to the yeah. to the what's that like podcast at turner hall for the queen of hearts is everybody would go well what i'd get message after message and, whoa what what kind of equipment are you using uh i want to do some people facebook no, live no. and i'm like i use my phone it's not even a new phone it was an iphone 6 yeah. it was not even that impressive but i'll go back to something that i people are afraid to fail and try things and just take 
tech equipment and mess up with it. And just for you to be active enough to take a phone to Turner Hall means a lot. And people just don't do that. Now, maybe they are more so because it's becoming easier. And the well, easier it becomes, they're starting to do it. I just wish, and this is my public a service announcement yeah, please. for all people yeah. out there, and retweet this to your friends and yeah. post it on Facebook. For the love of God, turn your phone sideways. Oh, sideways, yeah. <laughs> well, that's Go the thing. Go landscape yeah. mode, Because please. you don't get the full uh, landscape <laughs> view if you're not sideways. Yeah, like, that means... East and West, not North and it's South with the phone. It's almost 2019, yeah. people. That's You haven't video. watched your TV on it on, on a side angle. Well, Turn your phone. And believe it or not, my company, like Radio.com, and all the, we have social media training. We have video seminars. And I'm sure it, it, your, your other business that you work with, that this is the same thing. You have to inform people about very basic things, whether it's using a camera phone or anything, so that you can post that stuff on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Yeah. How important is social media? To what huge. you do. It's huge. How, how is that? Because, it, and, it, and it's really in sports especially. I'll start, I'll take for sports first. Sports broadcasting and sports journalism has changed because now, and we're seeing it, and it can play, it can wreak havoc a little bit. Adrian Wojnarowski is a guy I mentioned earlier in the podcast. The Woj. Yeah, so yeah. if Woj breaks something, it's called a Woj bomb, right? Because mm-hmm. he, he before he writes a story, the first thing he's got to do, whether it's him or Shams who works for Yahoo or any of these dudes, they want to get the tweet out because that's credit, right? I broke the news that um, Brooks is being traded to Phoenix for um, another pl- basket, another player for the Phoenix Suns, or they're going to go get uh, Kelly Oubre from Washington. Well, we saw that. They got that tweet out. The, tw- the trade didn't happen because somebody in the NBA, whether it was an agent, gave that information to Woj. And it was the wrong Brooks was mentioned in the trade. Trade got called off, you know, like you see that happen all the time now. But it's changed because like I tell my guys on the radio station, like Penny Hardaway is going to be the coach at Memphis. Okay, you've got that information. While you're talking, tweet that out so that you get you're getting credit for it. I broke the story that uh, Mike Miller is going to be the assistant at Memphis, and now I'm talking about it right now live on the radio. Did you guys hear this? I just tweeted it out, blah, 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 blah. And here we go. So it's tweet and then talk. Yeah. And then and then that's gonna be cut, spliced into a promo that's on the internet, that's on demand, and that's live on the radio. So it's it's a multi-dimensional process. It's so different, you know. And then and then video, people wanna see it too. So it's like so and so was in the studio. So I've got a social media guy at the radio station who's covering the fact that um, the number one recruit in America is in our studio. James Wiseman is in the 92.9 studios. Mm-hmm. Okay, get that camera phone in there. Let's get, get that video too. Yeah. Along with the live audio. It's a it's a multi-dimensional thing. It just seems like it's so, you have to go so wide with everything. You've got Facebook, Twitter, Insta, yeah. Snap. You've got all these different things. You have to cover all of them. It's, it's yeah. so hard. But the cool thing is, and here's the why. The why is, it's cheap. You know, it used to be... It's true. Bosses... Program directors were always getting beat up because they're always asking for marketing budgets. I never have done that. My my boss rarely hears that. And I've always been one that thinks the, the medium is the medium is the medium. In other words, if you're using this stuff correctly, it's it's a it's an easy and and you should be doing your job better and more effectively through those channels to promote your brand and it becomes an extension of itself and it's 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 today's billboard. Billboards are you can still use do a billboard campaign, but it better be super creative and different, you know. And it makes people work harder and smarter, I think. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about the unicorns that you guys yeah. have on your yeah, billboards. Yeah, so, and that's a good you, example. You I'm glad you brought that, that up. So, so that brought it, up, brought it up. Oh, and it's like the headline on my Facebook page and on my my Twitter. Like, it's the, t- the top because I'm like, our our staff came up with this billboard and it was just a unicorn. And we've got, um, you know, a player in Jaron Jackson Jr. who's, like, defined him as the unicorn because he can shoot threes and he can dunk on people and he's, like, 6'11". And that was the, the, the first round draft pick for the Grizzlies. We're not using the licensing on that. And then Memphis just secured the number one player in America from East High School in Memphis, uh, James Wiseman. Got him over Kentucky. He decommitted from Kentucky, basically. And so that's a big deal to those people. And so that's where you go to the billboard company and say, we need to figure out a deal to get a billboard up across from East High School now, (laughs) pronto. Oh, and we've got this. And then you go to the marketing department, and they've got this cool idea to put this unicorn on there. And and then, hey, Brad, what should we put on it? Uh, Memphis, where unicorns play. Boom, logo, here we go. And that's... So you got to think a little different. Yeah. Radio and I if if any of my guys are listening, it's just true people love to see themselves on billboards, but at the end of the day it's about the work 
and uh, and being a little more creative than that, then hey, here's so and so, and you know, I'm on a billboard. Yeah. Are you ever not working? I don't think so. I think a part of you is always, but it's got to be a lifestyle thing. Like this, Gary has three or four jobs. He's writing for CBS and he's constantly prepping a radio show because of his other job. So it probably makes doing a radio show easier because he's writing about sports and he's doing sports. For me, I also am on the music side too because I've done music radio and sports and I'm working with other program director sometimes and he's getting my thoughts on it. I also do a radio show in Madison, Wisconsin in Indianapolis. Uh, I tape a uh, voice track for Indy, a station called Mix in Indianapolis. And and that's what you got to do in radio if you want to do this. Like you got to be all in on it because otherwise you're you're not going to make it. You got to make make it worth their while to keep you whether it's being a program director and pro- producing a radio show, helping with marketing. Uh oh, can you uh help us uh, voice track a show in Madison, Wisconsin on Triple M? Yeah, I love that station. It's awesome. Uh let me talk to the program director. Let's do that. Uh, yeah, I just think about what cuz I I follow you on Twitter. Yeah. I follow you on Facebook. Yeah. And you're you're going around the clock. You you you, you, you got not, you, have you to. might not be Schefter who's yeah. who's tweeting yeah. at, at all hours of the yeah. night. But you know what? It's the third quarter of, of a Grizzlies yeah. game, and you've got a little take on something. Well, I, and then yeah. you've got to have that ready for the next day yeah. because that's going to be the topics you're going to talk about. I mean, what what's your wife say when you go? Hey, just put the damn phone down and turn it off the TV. It for can a get a, it can get a little invasive. I, I can just say this. I can point to other people who do are worse than me. Yeah, uh, that helps because there are people that are worse than me, especially our hosts, because that's they're living it and they're really on the air. I'm just producing shows and yeah, I'm managing around it. But you have to be informed. And at the end of the day, it's about what people care about. So if you're in Mon Olive, people care about the Wildcats. In in this area, they may care about high school sports, or they care about the the homecomings in the summer and the events in the summer. Um, in Memphis, people deeply care about basketball. So and it has to be part of who you are and what you're about, because that's what the community is about. And they're about that Tigers basketball team, maybe as much as the Grizzlies. Mm-hmm. They're all about it's Hoop City. If you go to St. Louis, you can talk about the Cardinals all day. By the way, the Blues are second place. As great as the Blues are, the Cardinal you can talk about baseball in St. Louis all day long, just like in Memphis where you can talk about basketball. All year long. All year long, 24 yeah. hours a day, yeah. seven days a week. You can have an enterprise that talks about St. Louis Cardinal baseball because that's how huge they are. And the Blues are second place. In Memphis, you can talk about hoops, SEC football, and Tiger football, second place. Yeah. And what do you think in terms of podcasting as the medium. You said you're going to be, you know, you're going to go radio.com. Mm-hmm. Your radio shows become podcasts, but have you thought about your own podcast yeah. and a way to market that and what would it be and how would it go? It ha- I have. Um, it has to be incredibly, I think, um, focused and it doesn't have to be, but if, if I were going to do it, I think it would have to be incredibly focused and I'd have to have the time to do it. And neither one of those have I, I have, A, haven't come up with the the most focused thing that I think would, would jet off. And B, I don't have the time to prep it like I'd want to. It's like a band. Sometimes in a band, you want it to be something and it may not get there. Um, for me, it's like the saxophone. I plucked up my saxophone the other day and just played a lick because I just want to prove to myself I could play it. I'm not good <laughs> at it, though. It's like And you put it on Facebook. I put it on Facebook because <laughs> yeah. I want to prove to people I can put, pick up the damn instrument and play a damn thing. My mom and dad paid all that money for it. I might yeah. as well be able to figure out how to play the thing, and I could probably play more. I don't practice it, though. What I'm saying is, like, A, yes, and B, I'm already providing podcasts because we're doing on-demand all day long. Now, there are radio stations who have uh, more staff than I have, Probably that are that are cranking out extra work. There's a guy in Boston that just came off the air to focus solely on Radio.com podcasting, and that's happening too. Where our company is, you know, in in New York, we uh, Entercom, the company I work for, Radio.com uh, has WFAN, and Mike Francesca is on there, and he has a podcast enterprise. Well, eventually, Mike will likely. I don't think I'm telling secrets here. Probably not be on FAN, and it'll be strictly pod and it, that doesn't really answer your question no it does i think i'm providing it, content but i i always people come to me all the time with this advice and they're like, tell me what i should do for a podcast it, it especially if they want it to be something or they will aspire to be in radio because of it or make it something that's sponsored they're making money off of which is very difficult to do because there's so much that was going to be my point how do you cut through the clutter the great thing about living in 2018, 19, uh, where we're at today, yeah. is that anybody can do a podcast. That's great. I'll give you two examples. The bad thing right. is 
everybody can do a podcast, and and it seems like almost everyone does. If and, and yeah. you you get, I find it so hard to just cut through the clutter of what we what what's out there. Well, here you would want to own Central Illinois if you were going for it, or you'd want to own a county. Like Madison Telco decided to be a cable company and own this area with cable providing and right. internet. It's the exact same thing. Own that. Um, a good example, two good examples. One is um, there's a guy in San Francisco, uh, the Dunked On podcast, and I started following him a few years ago, and he just routinely decided I'm going to tackle owning not only just the Bay Area, but I'm going to be a dissector of basketball and analytics and get into the weeds here. And He's like a lawyer. And I had had him on the radio station a couple of times because he had a bunch of followers. I'd read his stuff. He was really good and thoughtful to the point where now I can't get him on the air because he's focused on podcasts. I can't get him to be a guest because he's... He's pouring all of his heart and soul in. He's even doing live stream games with the, the, the game on, watching it, and you're listening to his commentary, Dunked On Podcast. <laughs> Gary's got the number one podcast, I believe, in in college basketball with that Eye on College Basketball broadcast with Gary Parrish and Matt Norlander for CBS. And it's not just the CBS machine. It's because three, four, five times a week, they're ranking basketball teams every day. They're talking about college basketball every day, and they are in the weeds on it, and they own that specific thing. And so what people do a lot is they'll be, I shouldn't say people, you know, that's the, the but it's true. People just like, I'm going to put a podcast on They start a podcast, and it's not focused. You could do one on agriculture right now in this area, and you could really lock in on it, and there'd be a segment of people who'd listen to it. Yeah. Okay? And, and that's where I'm at. I've got a segment of folks, and it's... 500, 600,000 yeah. people strong that I can count on. And what are they download. listening for? They're listening to, I, you know what, Brad? I think that's, I've tried to find my niche. Yeah. And I knew I couldn't go national. Number one, I, you, you might be the most national guest I've ever had. Uh, yeah. You and a couple of the authors I've had. But, the, but what I can do is own this area. In you can own the area. And that's what I tried to do. The topic I came up with was on a whim. It yeah. was like, I thought, you know, if I had a segment and asked somebody, hey, well, well, how did that go? What, yeah. what was that like? And my friend goes, no, that's your whole show. And yeah. it was like, that was the lightning bolt that started what we ended up becoming here. And I just try to keep it fun. I don't do politics. I don't do religion. I'm not going to get in the middle of, I've had, I've had uh, politicians go, yeah. hey, can I come on? I want to yeah. run for school board. Not, 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 not doing for me. It. Sorry. Not for me. Sorry. Yeah. I might believe Wise. in you. I might not, but I'm not going to do that. I had politicians during the last election. Say, can I get an ad on your show? And I'm, I'm, you know what? I'm just gonna say no. Uh, I, you know, I'm not doing no. it to make a ton of money. Well, it's just something about you. But I'm trying you. to keep yeah. what I've got here in its purest sense, whatever it is, mine. And and again, I, I might not put out episodes as much yeah. as I should. If I want to be a successful podcaster, I do it a lot more. It just doesn't shocker for all you listening. It doesn't pay the bills and put yeah. put food on my table. The podcast that I that you're listening to pays for itself. Yeah. So it allows me to do this hobby. It allows me to have fun. Allows me to just meet great people. I've met the most kick ass people yeah. doing this. And you know, you and I barely knew each other. Yeah. I've gotten to know you more today than I have in years, and yeah. that's what's just effing cool to me. Yeah. It's I I've just expanded what I've gotten to do in my life because of this little thing. You're in the back corner of my garage. People are interested in what you're interested in. If <laughs> you've got 500 just, people listening yeah. to this, I mean, that's a good segment of people because at any one given time, not trying to tell secrets, that's more than would be listening to WSMI at one given time in, in all likelihood most of the days. Um, but that niche is important. People want a window into what's John... What's he interested in? What's that like to do this certain thing? What's yeah. that like for the Storm Chaser dude? Hey, I, I, I listen to the emergency podcast because it's information about something that happened in my community the other day, it which is a, just tor happened. a tornado yeah. just tore through Mont Olive and jumped over the farm. Thank God. Yeah. You know, uh, it hit the, the auto place over here in Staunton. But Country classic cars. Tune yeah. in. That's wise. That was smart. Yeah. And that's because I had a relationship with that yep. guy that I could just contact him. He's like, yeah, good experience. I'll, I'll call you in an hour. So that's done. no different than what I'm doing in yeah. a sense because it's like, uh, hey, um, w something just happened in college uh, football. Uh, I've got to get uh, Mr. College Football, Tony Barnhart. I've got his cell phone. Text him. Get him on. You know, that's yeah. it's tough business, is what you're telling me. I mean, it ever, it's just like any business. You know, I, I remember I was devastated when my dad sold his excavating business when I was 14, and I had to figure out what I really want to do, which was radio. Um, but he he worked at it. 
And and that's why he was passionate about it. And he realized, I'm going to do a different type of business because I want to be passionate about something else where I'm not outside digging ditches. And that's why I tell people all the time when they're like, man, this is hard work to do it at this level or yeah. do it this good, whatever it is. And I'll say, hey, it beats uh, digging a, a septic tank in Walshville, Illinois. Uh, and it's I, I've seen that too. I'd rather do this. Yeah. Well, this is a lot of fun. This is, for me, a total passion project. I yeah. like doing it. If you're listening, you've probably been listening for a while. Or if not, you're listening because Brad just came on. And I appreciate you for no, doing that. No, this is awesome. I, and, I'm flattered. And it's it's just something that it became something I almost have to yeah. do now. It's almost like a community service. It's, it's like, pretty cool for me to be like, on here, though, because I, yeah. I listen to these. Like, when I pull them up, because it's, it's part of the community, you know? Yeah, and there's always something that you'll get every now and then, but <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know, Brad. It's a lot of fun to do. I'm glad that you came on the show to do it. What yeah. else haven't I asked you? Wow. What haven't you asked me? I would say um, it, it, the funny thing is, I love coming back here. We haven't talked a lot about Mont Olive, uh, but it's really what I'm all about. Um, you know, my, my family, we visit here, and the reason why I probably have gotten to know you a little bit is because I, uh, I come back here about eight times a year, almost once a month. And uh, I do it because I, I enjoy being around this community. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's just cool to come on your podcast and spend time with you. And uh, we're going to the Carlinville Holiday Tournament. If you're listening to this uh, on on demand, of course, that's going on. I know you're, you're, you've got a son that yeah, plays. By the, by the time this airs, it'll be over. <laughs> Yeah. So, so Mont Olive will either be the ninth or the tenth place yeah. finishers, but we'll have had fun doing it. <laughs> but I, I was really lucky to go to a school like Mont Olive because I got to play and I was really bad. And when you get to play, uh, it, it changes your perception because you get to participate. And so that really helped me springboard and, and be able to do some of these things well, we talked about. You know, let me let me say this. I think there's an important part of failure in the world that you experienced. You weren't a successful athlete. Nope. You had to start and work for something. Right. You saw hard work. And I do see that I'm giving all major society talk on you here. Yeah, now. no, it's true. But it is, we have so many kids that it's like, well, too hard, didn't do it, on to yeah. the next thing. Didn't really realize what the work they have to put in yeah. as time goes by. And it's not a generational thing. I mean, people huh. in all generations no. need to experience what's going on and figure out how they have to work for something. And let's yeah. go back to podcast. If I just put up my first podcast and twelve people listen, is that a failure? No, no, it's a start. No, and now and then, you know, I did a first broadcast from the Queen of Hearts, and five people listened. Yeah. Was that mean it was a failure? No, because it blew up. I blew up because of the Queen of Hearts, but I helped the Queen of Hearts in some well, way blow up, and it was yeah. symbiotic in that regard. Yeah. But when we started, it wasn't that successful. You have to go yeah. through. Hard times to get to good times. You suffered through all those yeah. small radio stations, meager right. pay, working two or three jobs at a time to get you where yeah. you are today. And I think that's what people sometimes miss. But I didn't change. The, what I, I think I'll go back to this. This is why I'm, I, I'm really honored and I'm grateful to be talking to you today here because... Um, like I was as successful as ever when I worked at WSMI doing farm reports and obituaries, and I haven't changed. And I remember what real work is. Uh, I've got, and you're right, it's not generational. It's old and young. I, but it happens to sometimes be new to a younger person who's trying to develop and grow. I'll give one example. There's a guy who's doing a, a show for me now. Um, and there was always, it's never going to happen for me. I knew it was going to happen for him. I knew it. But you can't just say it's going to happen for you. You've got to want to get and do the work and understand that even once you get there, it's never over, whatever that might be, whether it's having a band oh, no. or having a podcast or you like, that's why I said this radio station has been awesome for me. The one I work at now at 92.9, because all I ever wanted to do was have the station that goes because what happens so much is it launches and then it doesn't go, or it goes for a little bit, and then something that you can sustain means a lot, whether it's you have a farm or a business, and a radio station is no different than that. And then for whatever reason, people view media differently because they think it's just sexier or cooler, and the truth is, <laughs> it's no different. You have to make money, you have to advertise, and you have to be successful, you have to have listeners and advertisers, and people have to dig it. And um, people don't want to do that. Yeah. That's, that's work. That's daily. So if you're if you're listening out there as a, as a listener right now, and you're thinking maybe you want to get into 
the media business. Yeah. What's your best advice, Brad? What do you do? How do you start? Get in. Get in and start grinding, you know, and that means whatever you can do, because I have so many people that I've talked to in Memphis that if they don't get to be an intern or work at my radio station, they're done. And that's terrible. That's awful. Why not go to Covington, Tennessee? Why not go to Litchfield, Illinois? Why not start at the local college radio station? And by the way, starting young certainly helps. Like a lot of people don't figure out what they want to do until, yeah, sometimes you do start older, but give it a go. You have to give yeah. it a go. Like I am totally, I wish I had the guts to have something like this, you know, like, but I, I don't, you have to have the time. You have to have the energy and the bandwidth to do it. And, uh, it, you have to evaluate what do you want to do with it and what success mean to you in any enterprise. But for young people, I get so many. I didn't get an internship at 92.9 ESPN in Memphis. I'm not getting into radio. It's not going to happen for me. Or radio sucks. You heard this one before. I didn't get in. Well, maybe you need to try a different avenue. Start your own podcast on a niche thing that, that takes off. And then you get a job from that. Or you start out as an intern in Litchfield. or And then you work that for a while. And then are you developing? Like, what what did you do differently this year that you didn't do last year? Do you sound the same? I mean, I look, listen to tapes, and they're awful from Wiz Me or from <laughs> even Las Vegas. I was doing, I know. when I did night shows in Las yeah. Vegas, 23, 24, it's like, why did they let me on the radio? And I was doing, like, you know, big night show in Las Vegas, Nevada, and, you know... You're always developing and growing, and that doesn't matter where you're at. You gotta suck for a while. It, sucking yeah, for you, long periods of time, and you, yeah. you, you, it, it comes a little bit at a time. Yeah, yeah. I always like. Uh, I was talking to a local girl. Uh, she is interning on a on a St. Louis radio. Yeah, station. I think I know who it is. Okay, and we were talking a little bit about it, about maybe about three weeks ago at a basketball yeah. game. And I said, you know what? Come over to my house. I'll let you sit in my studio. Yeah, you just. Put something out there. If it yes. sucks, who cares? You just got to start trying. Because if you don't yep. have anything, yeah. nobody's going to give you a job just because you you looked like you were passionate yeah. about it. Show me. Yeah. Show me what you've done. Well, Let me hear and, something. And that's why, yeah. Get the, out yeah. there. Put something together that says, I can do this. Yeah. Well, and I happen to have a master's degree. I don't need it. Like I, I probably shouldn't have a master's degree or even a bachelor's degree, frankly. Peep, here we go. What the people think um, you're not entitled to anything if you have a bachelor's degree. By the way, you're no. not entitled to anything if you no, have an associate's no. degree. The world doesn't owe you anything. If you get to work, yeah. you've started something. Yeah. And if you're good at it and you evolve and you grow in that job, so to the to the young lady, we'll speak to her for a second, and we won't single out anybody, but that person. What else are you doing besides the internship? Did you go to the What's That Like podcast studio and do that podcast? Do you have things that you do on a regular basis in your free time to help that craft? What other skills do you have? Do you Are you able to edit? Are you able to host a radio show? Are you able to book guests? Are you able to do everything at the radio station? And if you can do everything at the radio station, maybe you've mastered that craft and you need to move up or you need to move to a different market. But yeah. it can happen for you. But uh, th this is just like anything else, whether it's excavating a radio, sometimes you make your own luck. Yeah, you do. You got to be in the game. Yep. And if you're not, nothing yeah. happens. Yeah, and for me, yeah. it was farm reports and obituaries and uh, being in a pig pen in Carlinville, Illinois, for <laughs> uh, three or four years, and then just, you know, finding some stuff. Well, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, Brad, but... Brad, I can't thank you enough for coming over today. Oh, really cool. I mean, I, I felt bad. It's like... Uh... I know you're here on a little vacation. Yeah, no, here no, I put you to work. I'm. This is this is fun for me. You're you're right across from the farm, so it's yeah. Good. We can my, literally my folks, see yeah, each other from, from 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 where we're yeah. at. Yeah, Bro broadcasting from Mount Olive, Illinois. This is this is like history. Studio three twelve. Is, is this three twelve? Well, yeah. yes, that's what I call. Uh, yeah, it. I see. I, I'm following <laughs> it now. I was on the other end of town, so this is the good end of town. Well, back three twelve. I met my house address is yes, three twelve, yes. and those, those happen to be the numbers I had laying Very around. Sharp. So I screwed them onto the door, and that's how we got the name. I was at 212 West 6 South in Mount Olive, Illinois. Everything in the Midwest here is is wonderful because it's boxy and organized. We have Main Street, and then we go north and south. Well, we'll, we'll end with a little Mount Olive yeah. story. So you Please. and I, last night, uh, we're, we're, we're taping this, I think it's the 29th of December. Okay. And we'll, it'll air in the first week or two of January. Excellent. But uh, Happy New Year, everybody. Yes, Happy New yeah. Year. I uh, hope it's going well. <laughs> Thanks we're, for we're listening. We were talking last night, and I say, hey, you just want to come over tomorrow? And you yeah. go, yeah. And I was talking with you and yeah. LW, your dad. Yeah, that's my dad. And I go, well, you know where I live? And he goes, no, where you live? And I go, well, I live here and here. And he goes, 
I don't know. How do how do people in Mount Olive t- tell each other directions? Do you remember the conversation we had last night? I, it, I had a couple of drinks last night, a couple of beverages, but uh, it's it, it's, uh, it's not about where you live. Oh, who used to live there two generations ago? Used to live yes. there. You give directions by who? It's exactly used to right. Live in your well, house. my my folks live on what used to be called the Prangy Farm. Prangy's so, curve. Uh, yeah, and it's yeah. on Legendary Route sixty six here in Mount Olive, and people will know where I'm talking about because it's a big farm, but. Uh, you're exactly right. That farm will be Prangy Farm. This will be who two generations ago? It was Corky Goldocker's house. The Goldocker's house. <laughs> Mine would have been my folks, actually. Weiss's old house on 6 South because uh my dad, Len and Pat Weiss, that I we lived in that they lived in that house for 30 years. Mm-hmm. That's a, and uh yeah, you got to go through a generation before it becomes yours. That's oh, that's yeah. the deal here. Absolutely. Nobody can figure out the streets and the directions, but you tell yeah. them where oh you live two houses down from where so and so lives. Yeah. Ah yeah, I know where you're at. Yeah. And, and I'm on the fire department too. Oh and, wow. And even when you you know you're going to a call somewhere, you go well, you go down Two Mile Road, and you turn where the Johnson, <laughs> where the Johnson Bar burnt down. So where that where it used to be, then you head another you know quarter mile south, and you, and then you turn you know where the uh, where that old tree was. Isn't it awesome though? Yeah, it's that's how it works here. Small town lore, uh, and that's probably why I enjoy it coming back so many times every year because it's it is home and it's like it, it you know i i tell people all the time i'm like i grew up in a town where i would ride my bike to school every day from first grade until i got a car in high school my mom and dad wouldn't see me for days and i'd just return like off a bike i'd go play wiffle ball there's no stoplights. Mm-hmm. I drive to my dad's business on a bike over here to the excavating business on the corner of town when he owned uh, Weiss Excavating, and I'd just drive back. My parents wouldn't even see me for a day, and it, no worries at all. A little bit of Pollyanna there. Um, it is. I mean, it, it, the world's changed. Now we has put, changed. Give them cell phones and track where they are every second of every yeah. day. Sorry, kids. I'm not giving my kid a phone until he's 18, I'm, 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 or at least high school. I'm, I'm hoping. He's yeah. 10. Yeah, you're there, buddy. I'm, Two I'm years. at the dilemma. Yeah. Two years, you know, seventh grade, it's yeah. going to happen. I'm, You know what? I'm enamored just sitting here watching you, because I know you grew up in Staunton. There's this staunton mont Olive divide. I'm just happy that a Staunton person fell in love with mont Olive so much to, to be on the fire department and start his studio in mont Olive. Like, this... this I'm telling you, Mont Olive usually gets the short end of the stick Dude, here. Dude, so. I will tell you this: I am, I am a Mont Olive man. I uh, enjoy that a lot. I grew up in Staunton, yes, and no, no offense to any of my old Bulldog teammates and friends in Staunton High School class of '88, folks. I've been here now longer than I was. I there. know. I, I love it. I left there when I was 23, 24. <laughs> I'm almost 50. Yeah. I'm a Mont Olive person now. Well, yeah. I, you know what? I can't speak highly enough. My my brothers in the Mount Olive Fire Department. That's awesome. We've seen a lot of things you don't unsee. Oh, I bet. You, Especially in this age. You get to mm. experience a lot of stuff that you really don't ever want to talk about again. And we're, when you're on a fire department like that with folks, that's yeah. just a bond. It's not war. No. I'm not going to go there. I think that might be it. your next podcast is to get that talk about some of that stuff. Oh, talk no. about the behind you know the scenes. That's probably, the stuff yeah. that you, well, number one, yeah. you can't talk about it. You right, can't, yeah, because when you do talk about it, everybody is in small town. They go, yeah. oh, well, don't, you know what? That You're talking so about so and so, right? So you don't talk I about it. You. Number two is they're the only ones you can talk about it with because they have the context of, yep. of everything. And it's, it's, it's tough, but, you know, 20 years, I'll be there 20 years in a year. So 19 years I've been doing that, and uh, you know what? Somebody's got to show up. you got to be there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Mont Olive needs people like you, yeah. and and they're lucky to have several of you, it sounds like. I mean, oh. uh, the Shones are still involved. Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, that, yeah, the whole family's been part Chief of the fire Don department. Now you couldn't find yep. a better city Don's father awesome. yep. to to what everything yep. he does. Yep. It certainly is, and I know he's he's listening. Is to Busky you. in there, too? Busky, yeah, yeah, Gary, Gary. yeah. yeah. Yeah, but, but yeah, Don will be listening to this for sure. And okay. He'll just be happy you got a shout out. Shouts to Don. Yeah. <laughs> Who else we need to give a shout out to in Mon All that's listening or in the uh, region? You know Hopefully what? there's more than the last one. I'll, I'll tweet this out. Hopefully we get more listeners to this <laughs> What's That Like than the last one. Not to disparage the tornado one. No, no not, not at all. That was something. We're going else, for mass. But, but no, this is, this, is, this is you. This is your story. And that's kind of why I did this show. I, There's I appreciate a lot it. of yeah. people that just have interesting stories. Yeah. And they don't have to be Kardashians to, right. to be interesting. You know, Brad 
small town guy. Yeah. You've you've done your thing, and people want to follow your path. And hopefully, right. some folks out there listen to it. Go, man, you know what? That yeah. inspired me. I want to do that. Other folks are just going to go. It's great to get to know Brad yeah. better. I'm one of them. I want to say awesome. One thing I do want to leave you with before we go, and I, I'm glad you kind of started and reset here, uh, John, and thanks for having me on, is I wanted to bring up Terry because this is a Central Illinois podcast. Terry Tote. Terry Tote has been ill, and um, I'm grateful that when I was you know, 18 years old, he gave me an opportunity to work at WSMI and um, gave me a start, really, and he's not been doing well. I know he wants to be on radio as much as he can, and that's his passion, so for him to be on the radio and hear him recently is great. And they had a fundraiser in Carlinville that raised some money for him the and his Terry family. Tote shootout. And, uh, yep. and donate to that. Uh, tote tough um, because he's worthy and he's an awesome person. And I owe him a lot and I'm grateful to him. And so um, give a shout out to Terry and to uh, and Brian Talley and everybody at WSMI at, at, in that regard. But uh, Terry was always there for me and uh, people should be there for him. And, and so send him a message or reach out to him and listen to his radio station. That's it. Couldn't end it on a better way. Brad, thanks for coming by. Thank you. Thanks. Well, I want to thank Brad for coming on the show. Thanks a lot, everyone, for tuning in. I hope you got a lot out of that. A uh, lot of good discussion there. And, and I know some folks that uh, will listen to this and, and, and hopefully take some of the advice Brad gives to heart. We've got a lot of younger people to listen to the show. And, you know, it's, it's stuff they probably hear all the time. But maybe somebody like Brad that's living a dream, living his dream, getting into broadcasting, uh, maybe some of you younger folks out there that want to take that route as well can uh, can certainly help that. And if you've got an idea for a podcast, reach out to me. You know, it's not that hard. I mean, uh, I'll give you a little bit of advice to get you going. I kind of just went off on my own and did this, figured out. But here we are in the third year of the What's That Like podcast. So well over 33, 34 episodes, I think, at this point. And if you just want to get started, you got an idea, Reach out. Let's talk. I'll, I'll help you get going. It's uh, certainly not an expensive entry compared to a lot of things that if you want to get going in, uh, two three hundred dollars and you're in business uh, and, and, and in quality business. You you can certainly do it for cheaper, but if you want it to sound good, a couple three hundred bucks and and I'll give you a product list and we can get you going. And hey, who knows? Maybe we'll put you right here on the WTL network. How about that? Maybe we'll launch that here in 2019. Breaking news. Why? Because I just thought of it. So let's get to my friend Greg Shively. Greg, as you know, has been on the show many times before. We've tried to have him on to talk about various topics. And uh, the reason I'm bringing him on now is because Greg was also in the radio business for a while. He was once the 13th caller to KMOX to win St. Louis Steamers tickets uh, back in 1989. So, Greg, let's let's get him on the line here. All right, Johnny. We're done. What? Sorry. Right of time. All right, Bob, you're the boss. So a- anyway, sorry, Greg. Uh, Again. Can't hear about that St. Louis Steamer story right now. We'll hear it next time. Live on the What's That Like podcast. Peace out. What's That Like is available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Search for What's That Like. Subscribe today and never miss an episode. Streaming is available at SoundCloud.com and on the SoundCloud app. Follow What's That Like at Facebook.com slash what's that like podcast and on twitter at what's that like pod all opinions of the guests of the what's that like podcast are their own not necessarily the views of the host or the podcast producers we hope you enjoy this podcast serving central illinois and beyond peace out